Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us again. Please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over, and we owe it all to you because you are our Creator. You are our, our Father. You are our closest relative, and we thank you for all that you are providing for us especially in this day and age. We look out and we see so many people hurting and suffering, and in many ways I say that needlessly because they have forsaken you. They have turned from you, and uh, that's pretty evident. And I don't say that for all people, but in, in most general terms, those that are hurting and suffering so badly are doing it on their own, and all they need is you. And I pray that they will reach out to you this day. Before it is over. <clears throat> we also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. There are many, Lord. We thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. Also, Father, we bring before you, we pray for Shane, Heather, Caleb, Isaiah on, on their trip that they have a safe and uh, nice time on their journey and return home safely and uh, as I already said all those hurting and suffering father right now there's so many people I'm hearing that just are deciding whether or not to put gas in their tank or food on the table and either one it's getting extremely expensive and I'm seeing those that are uh, on disability on Social Security and that's all they have there's no other income because of their situation. They're hurting and suffering terribly. I pray that those will continue to donate like at Mana Food Bank to help those in need and just to be there to help others when they see the need. Uh, if we would just take that step, it, it would be a lot easier for a lot of people. <coughs> I also pray, dear Lord, for Faye, Jody, Bernard, and all those who are studying with us now around the world, we thank you for each and every one. Rebecca, for guidance. Jacob's camp uh, coming up, uh, safety, and that he has a great time, and his mother's sanity, as she says. <laughs> we also pray, dear Lord, for Harley. On all these, Father, we ask that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal. In Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. And as always, Father, we pray for Israel and our nation, for thy kingdom to come, knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders that are on the front lines helping your children, as well as our military who are in arm's way, or who are yet to go into arm's way. We pray for their safety and speedy return home. And we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. But we know, dear Lord, if they just search out and reach out, that truth will come to them. You will see to it. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Okay, getting back into our Father's Word, we're back in Ephesians, uh, beginning a new chapter, chapter 4 today. And chapter 3 really was basically the purposes of God. And uh, now we're getting in really into the love of Christ. And a lot of people realize what He has done for us, but <clears throat> there's a lot more behind the scenes that he has done and is still doing. And we're going to be covering that through Paul today. <clears throat> so chapter 4, verse 1, and it reads, this is Paul speaking, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye, now remember who ye are. Who, who are we talking about here? Remember chapter 1, verse 1? Yeah. Saints and faithful in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So those that accept him, those that do their very best to walk in his ways, 
and when they sin, they, they repent, and they get back on track. So Paul is saying that I, I, I pray that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Yeah. So this tells us several things. This thing about being called. Well, before I get to that, Paul uses a statement here, the prisoner of the Lord. Yeah. What do you think he meant by that? It's easy. Well, tell me. You're either possessed by one or the other. You're a prisoner of Satan or you're a prisoner of the Lord. Your choice. Mm -hmm. All right. When, Somebody when, owns you. I agree with you now. And, and the fact of the matter is, um, what makes one a prisoner? Like you say, well, I'm a prisoner of Christ. And I've used this before. You, you, owe, you owe a debt, usually, of some sort, either Could be. Yeah. a criminal act that you've committed or... Um, no, see, that debt's been paid once you repent of it. You asked it was what paid made, by Jesus Christ. You asked what made a prisoner. You didn't specify that you All right, what makes a prisoner with, with a saint? What we owe the Lord. But you what still he, have an obligation. Yeah. Even after you, you think your debt's paid, mm -hmm. the the legal part maybe we the, can't we can never. What does it literally mean to be a prisoner? Really? Locked up in jail, man. No, have no free choice. See, that's the key. That's why I kept saying. <laughs> and 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 the thing is, people feel, I believe, in a lot of cases, why they don't want to give their heart to the Lord right. is because they feel that the Lord awesome. will require something of them that they don't want to give. Right. But they're not willing to go that distance yet. Well, I want to do it, but not right now, see. Or or but they the, want to do what they want to do when they want to do it kind of thing. Yes, but we're talking about saints mm -hmm. and set aside ones. Right. And the fact is there's a lot of people who accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior but they only go to a certain length. That's why we have so many different types of teachers and evangelists and, 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 and um, apostles and that sort of thing <coughs> because there's different levels of understanding with people. Now, the critical thing is for us with that kind of knowledge is that we have to put that in mind whenever we're talking with anybody we don't know what level they're on if any but the Lord does yep. that's why it's imperative for us when we're talking with someone about the Lord and his word about the gospel about the Holy Spirit whatever the case may be that we do so being directed by the Lord himself meaning godly discernment and that's what he teaches us as we mature to be able to start to listen to him and then to obey what he has given us to do. You know. Now it says also that he beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, I, I've talked about this before. Let's say you're out and about on the highways and byways. You're driving your car and uh, listening to gospel music and singing with it and having a good old day. And all of a sudden, somebody just cuts you. I mean, just almost rams into you and cuts you off so bad. Now, how you act at that point, sometimes you'll get really upset and maybe say some things or make some gestures that you shouldn't be doing. And why is that? I mean, was it fair that they cut you off? No. But you doing that to them, is that going to help you at all? Is it going to help them at all? No. Other than know that you tell them that you're upset. Um, but the fact of the matter is, what, what came to me a long time ago is that, and I used to, I used to go off. Um, but what I've learned is, what if, and the Lord taught me this one, what if you're here on, on the airwaves here and you're preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and all of a sudden that guy that came by you and saw you acting in that manner that you were acting 
and they see you on camera and say, don't listen to that guy, he's a heathen, you know. <coughs> it's, that's the kind of situation that you can find yourself in, which means what? You need to be godlike all the time. You need to protect your credibility. Can we be godlike all the time? With work. We can't do it just naturally. Naturally, we follow the fleshly sin. That's nat natural to us. And we've had to learn to rise above that, with God's help, of course, and His forgiveness by the cross. So, he says that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, verse 2, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering for bearing one another in love. In other words, we will we will help people. What's what's that statement? You could lead more. You get more flies with with honey than vinegar, or something like that. Something like you can get fl more flies with honey than vinegar. <laughs> I don't like using that statement, but close enough. But the fact of the matter is. <coughs> What's the number one thing that will bring a Christian down? The number one thing. Pride. Pride. And we can, the more knowledge we're given, the more solid we are in that knowledge, the more stable we are in it, we've got to be careful not to forget where we came from. Because the majority of the people of this world today and I'm not saying this lightly, lightly, is that, that they are living without God. They are not walking with the Lord. You say, well, how do you know this? It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure it out when you turn on the TV and watch what's going on. Um, now, everybody has a voice. Everybody has a, an idea. Everybody has a comment. Uh, but the thing is, they're all not on the same page. And they have their own agendas that they have developed. Their own ideas and their own thoughts of why things should be the way they are. Or why this should be the way it should be. Or, or change it over here. And we're not together. Our Father wants us to be together on a lot of the things that's happening in this world today. And I'll, I'll show you here in just a moment. So, but we do this with lowliness and meekness. And why long suffering? Because it's going to be the rest of your life. The rest of your life, you are going to be dealing with these things that you need to learn how to overcome the negativity, emotional state that, that evil can bring upon people and thrust at you. And it's just like wearing that gospel armor. What is that, Ephesians 6? Mm -hmm. Wearing that gospel armor all the time so that we can have these negative things bounce off of us. You know. But we have to be we have to be useful instead of burying our heads in the sand. Listen to verse 3. Endeavoring or attempting to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What is this unity of spirit? Well, he's going, to, he's going to show us here in a few moments, but the unity of the spirit is basically we all have different people with different talents and different blessings. And they all have an opportunity of using that, but with, this, with the understanding that we're all working for the same goal. We all want the same thing that God wants. He wants His children to be able to come and spend eternity with Him. And to do that, there's certain criteria that mankind must do. You know, you say, well, you're talking about works. Well, if you're talking about good works, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Not bad works, evil works, but doing good for people and caring about people. That's the problem. It, it amazes me where people are shouting signs and they're screaming and doing all this stuff. And the fact of the matter is they're doing this towards other people with hate. But then turn over here and says, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Mm -hmm. 
I, I made you see the dual role that people are taking or I trying made, to take? I made a comment the other day to one of my friends that people behaving like that is the exact reason that so many people have walked away from church and walked away from God. Because of the, well, if that's how a Christian acts, I don't, I don't want nothing to do hypocrisy. with. It's called hypocrisy. Yeah. Yes. And, um, yes, that has, that has closed more church doors than any other. And more hearts. But people. you know what? I say good, yeah, because that gave the person an opportunity. If that was the situation, the environment they were in, they don't need to be in that environment. But the bad thing of it is, sometimes they just give up altogether. Mm -hmm. Hence, that's why we have, and others as well have have things on on YouTube and other Facebook and other things where people can go now. They can search, man. They can spend all day searching. All kinds of different places. And, but where does a person land? Always. Back in the Lord. No. They land on a place that they think is the right place for them. Mm -hmm. And that can be scary. Because the reason I say that, let's say you've come to the Lord Jesus Christ you were in a church situation that really wasn't lining up with what you were reading in the scripture. We all know situations like that. So you left that church. But <clears throat> instead of continuing to search, they stop altogether. Now, the way I look at it is there's nothing wrong with stopping that, but if you don't go to the Father who's the author and the finisher of your faith, and say, Lord, I know that wasn't right for me, and I know there's more. Lead me. Now, he may lead you directly to his word by himself, and he can do that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> or he'll lead you by someone who does have that truth that he has blessed. But you've got to be the one to say, Lord, I, I, I need this. I want this. But that's, people are lazy when it comes to, people are lazy when it comes to studying our Father's Word. Ask me how I know. Because we're all lazy when it comes down to it. We say, well, I got so much to do, I got this and that. You know what? You wouldn't have all that if you didn't have Him. You know? That's why I don't understand why people don't honor the Sabbath. You know, just because we're doing this now on Sunday so I don't fall asleep on my way to work on Saturday doesn't mean that we need to stop our Sabbath worship to honor him from sundown to sundown. That's biblical. But that's your choice. But it seems to me, if, if people just give a little inch, boy, God will take them a mile. You know, he really will. You know? That's saying that you'll always find time for doing things you want to do, basically. Well, that's it. You know, and it reminds me of, of how I was when I was... Um, Back in the 70s, I had um, a little aluminum fishing boat. And I'd work hard during the week. And I'd only get like maybe three hours sleep on a Saturday morning. But I'd be out on that boat and having a good old time all day long. And it, and it finally got through here. Why? I mean, where all the other times I'm so dragging tired... I'm doing something I don't want to do, you know. But see, here here lies the, the the secret with God's word. If you're doing something you don't want to do, you're not going to get anything out of it. But if if there's a purpose behind what you want to do, say, Lord, I I know I know all the riches are here. I know I know this is it. This you can fill me with. And, and bring me out of despair, frustration, whatever you're in, he's going to do it, you know, and it doesn't matter how much time. How many times have you guys heard me say when, uh, on, on Saturdays, I'd go, I'm dog tired, but the Lord has given me the strength, but when I'm done, I'm exhausted. Well, that's because that's what the Spirit will do for you, no matter what time of day, you know. So keep that in mind. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. I want to read the next three verses together. This is where the rubber meets the road. There is one body, 
and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Five, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Six, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now what's he saying here? He's basically saying there's only one God, period. And, and that God has a Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? You being a saint or set aside one or, or faithful in Christ have the same spirit. It's not a different spirit. It's the same spirit that God has. And people don't seem to understand how powerful that is. How, how, how much power is in that. They don't utilize it because they don't know how to utilize it. But when you learn this, when, when it's a part of you and you're a part of him, nothing can get in your way. I mean, yeah, you, like Donna said earlier, we're going to have tribulations, we're going to have obstacles. Yeah! But you know what? Anymore? Like me and her were talking last night about uh, the possibilities of employment just folding up in a lot of cases. And we were talking to are we worried? <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, my Father will put me where I need to be, where I need to be, and when I need to be there. <coughs> and that's faith. Yes. And, there, and there's no question in my mind about it. See, no. uh, back in the day, yeah, I'd have questions. Well... I don't know what's going to happen next. You know. We worried a lot. We did worry. Mm -hmm. it was we we thought we didn't need to. What? You, you were, there's one step before knowing. You say, well, the knowledge. Well, the knowledge is always, you knew it then. It isn't the knowledge, it's the faith. That's right. Do you believe that he will take care of you? Yeah. You know it. Everybody knows it, but they don't believe it. They don't they're have the faith. They're not trusting enough. Once you have that, the everything else falls into just place. Like, just yeah. like Thomas of the Apostles. Yes. You know, I just all the Apostles were there, and Jesus came in. Of course, Thomas wasn't there. And all the Apostles, who weren't liars at that point, told him, Hey, Jesus was just here, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm not going to believe it until I put my finger just... in his side. You know, and, um, and that's lack of faith. Yeah. You know. Now, did he have faith afterwards? Hopefully. Well, he said, my, my Lord, my God, got down on his knees. I guess that was part of repentance, too, afterwards. So chances are he had faith. Well, should it take that much for it's, Jesus himself to appear and say, here, put your hand here? For some people it does. I, I, I reckon so, but some, hmm. some people. You See, know that's what? why what we're getting into here is yeah. different aspects of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're what they need. Yeah. Because we all don't need the same thing. We think we do. Well, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But what I mean is in our learning, we all don't need the same exact type of teaching. Some of us can only go so far. See, that's what, what was upsetting me for the longest time. I couldn't figure it out until the Lord revealed it to me yeah. about evangelism. Now, evangelism is, is critical. It's, it's, it's number one thing that a person needs to have done for them is to be evangelized, meaning to have them learn and understand that they need the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and that they need to repent of all their sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ into their life. That's evangelism, you know. But I used to think, well, once you learn that, you automatically go to step two. That's not exactly the case. Mm -hmm. I've learned, the hard way actually, but I've learned that some with some people, they can't go any farther. They just, not that they're stupid, but the fact is, the Lord knows that some people can only go so far with him at this point in their life. There's only so much they can handle. 
And it said in Scripture, the more that is given, the more is required. Well, he loves them so much, he's not going to require any more of them. Now, the millennial period is different. We're all going to be in it together, and we're all going to be on the same level learning. <clears throat> so, it says in verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace, that's unmerited favor, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. That's exactly what I was just talking about. All this is a gift. It's a gift to you from Christ. And it's to lift you up, to build you up, to have you grow. But the Lord knows that some people can only go so far. And if you come in the mix and you try to bring them to a higher level of understanding, we'll say, the third level of teaching, we'll say, and they don't get it, don't get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Because that part of it may be blocked from their understanding. You say, well, why? I got my own theories, but I can't prove it to you in Scripture. Right. My, my theory is about the first earth, heaven, age, right. of who and what a person was. But they still have an opportunity, you know, but only to a certain degree. Verse 8, where... For he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. That's what he took with him. And gave gifts unto men. The gifts, of course, would be the Holy Spirit. But what is this, he led captivity captive? What's captivity? Well, who puts a person in captivity? In the flesh. That's right. So when when Christ ascended, he basically didn't didn't leave Satan in charge, although he is a prince of the air. But what did he bring forth to every single man, woman, and child? The Holy Spirit to lead God and direct them. So when when Christ took led captivity captive. Remember, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. That's what this is basically talking about. Yeah. Where he, he's, Satan's not behind every bush out here. You know, He used to roam freely. Now his spirit roams freely, just like the Holy Spirit does. But you don't have to be captive by it. Let me read the next two verses. Verse 9. Now that he ascended, that means went up, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? 10. He that descended, came down, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. So it's saying Christ came down, did his work, and Christ went up. But it was to fulfill Fill, oh, what's he filling? He's filling in the entire universe with his spirit. And the fact is, I don't care if you're here or Pluto or wherever, God's presence is there. You know, no, we're not there. We, that's a statement I can't prove to you. But you'll find out that God created this universe to be filled. So I often wondered... Lord, why so many universes? Why so many stars? You know. And mm -hmm. the best thing that came to me is that, and I can't prove this, this is just a, right. we'll have to I'll wait. call an educated guess on my part, mm -hmm. that I believe that when the Lord descends the final time mm -hmm. and cleanses this earth, I believe the entire universe will be cleansed at the same time. And he also said, if you remember in his, in his teachings, mm -hmm. that uh, for every person that you teach and you teach correctly, let's say you have five people or ten people, you'll be given ten cities, right? Or, the cities are going to prepare or, or, a place for you. Or prepare a place for you. So <coughs> what if, yeah. hypothetically speaking, 
all this universe, you, you talk about Star Trek, right? <laughs> I mean, we're going to be buzzing around and we're going to be visiting folks and we're going to be having a good old time. Pluto. Uh, <laughs> I, I doubt it'll be called Pluto then, but well, right. I'll just, I, this I is something to think about. Here. Because I don't believe God makes wasted spaces. Uh -uh. And this thing's vast. And as a matter of fact, if you studied any uh, any of this, stars are still being created as we speak. Right. You know, so are people. Yeah. You know, so, well, I don't know about created, but uh, they're being born. Yeah. So I, I know yeah. I, that got off on some kind of no, mystic, mystic realm no, here. I might have thought of it. And, but the, I'm not teaching this. I'm just saying it's just a thought, a theory that I can't prove, uh, but it makes one wonder because you know God doesn't make junk. Right. And um, right now it seems that a lot of these planets are kind of wasted. Right. I mean, you can't live on them. But what about spirit? Yeah. You know, spirit can live anywhere. Right. Well, and then you think about the, the, the dimensions. God's not bound by dimensions, basically, yeah. or time. Right. What we see is what we understand. By dimensions our is a whole nother gamut. That's what I'm saying. That, that could be a completely you could have, different... You could have tw 20,000 Earths in another dimension, mm -hmm. right. you know. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of things to think about, but we won't know until we get there. Exactly. But we will know. So, uh, what verse am I on? Uh, 11, I think. 11. Now, this is, brings it all together. And he gave some apostles, that's to teach apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. This is what the Lord gave to the people. And why? Because we're on different levels. See, the Lord wants us to be all on one level, just like he told us in verses 4, 5, and 6. He wants us eventually to all come to that understanding and level of understanding and knowledge and wisdom. But quite frankly, that's not going to happen till the millennium and after. We're not going to be having... If, if Let's say you're evangelized, and that's as far as you go through the time of your, your being in the flesh existence, and you pass on. Well, you've been evangelized. You're going to the eternal kingdom. You accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's so much more to learn. You know, hence the millennial period. That's when it'll all come together. But in the meantime, he gave us different levels of teachers and people to teach us. And it depends on what level we're at or what level we are going to be able to get to, depending on you. Verse 12, for the perfecting, that's the point of all of them, for the perfecting or equipping of the saints. That's predestined set-aside ones. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying, that means building up, of the body of Christ. The whole point of each and every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is to build people up to as far as they can go. Now, sometimes you need to change teachers. Sometimes you need to change where, where you're studying at. You only go to a certain level. Let's say you're evan you've been evangelized for the last 18 years. Well, you say, well, I know there's more. To this. All of a sudden, you, you realize there's more than evangelism. I know I need it, but I know there's more to it. And you start praying to our Father about it. I guarantee you. <coughs> He's going to open up a door for you, but you got to be the one to walk in. <laughs> and test, 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 test. Test the people you're dealing with. If they are not covering the Word of God as it is written, as God is teaching, teaching you in your heart from these words, keep searching. Because there are true teachers out there. Far and few between, but they're there. 
God has seen to it. Every generation, they're called remnant. Every generation since Adam and Eve, there's been a remnant in every generation of teachers. Who was the first, remember who the first real teacher was past Adam? His seventh Enoch. son, Enoch. Enoch taught, taught about the, the, the fallen angels. He taught all, from uh, Adam all the way forward. He taught about the first earth and first heaven age. That's why he taught so well that God took him. Enoch never saw a physical death. That was the first, first one taken like that. So, verse 13. Till we all come, in other words, we do this, till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's what I was talking about. We, we utilize all these teachers and we, we minister unto them until we all come to the unity of the faith. Did it say faiths? Plural. No. Faith. Remember, there's one God, one Lord, and one faith, and one baptism. Period. There's only one. Man has manipulated all this. Well, you got this faith, and you got that religion, you got this God, you got that... It's only one. Only one. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. In other words, we're, we all come to the same understanding. <coughs> People might say, well, we all know about the Son of God. I just heard this yesterday. It was on a news program. Someone talking about the uh, the mosque. And uh, what's it called? Uh, uh huh. Alexis. Yeah, that mosque. I have a problem with that word for some reason. It sticks in my throat. Mm. But anyways, inside there, there's a subscription. A subscription. Inscription. Inscription. It says. Um, God has no son. God has no son. Right. No. Now, eventually, that's going to be erased. Yeah. At that location, I know when. Yeah, you too. And and um, point being is that we're all going to come to the same faith and the same understanding about God. It's not going to be different levels. No. Now it'll be different choices of people. Some people will still reject God, believe it or not. I. Well, I don't fathom it now, but I really won't fathom it then, but there still will be. <coughs> Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man, this man, woman, or child, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You're going to come to the point, eventually, you're going to know the fullness. Christ. And all, all, all those, we think we know a lot now, but you know what? We're just at the tip of the iceberg of his power and authority. That, 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 that immense power that exists, and it has always existed. Uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty awesome during that time. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children... Here's what you were talking about, Ross. Mm. Tossed to and fro. Tossed to and fro with what? False doctrine. Yeah. Any new wind of doctrine comes along. Let's jump on that bandwagon and follow it. Must be new. Must be right. It must be good. False. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That's man-made religion. By the slight of men. Mm -hmm. In other words, what? Listen. Yep. And cunning craftiness. Yep. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yep. Well, I know there's robbers. We're not talking about robbers out there. No. Mm -hmm. We're talking about so-called self-appointed Christians. Self-appointed apostles. Self-appointed teachers and preachers that they're, they're only in it for the jingle jangle in their pocket. Or to cause you to fall short of the glory of God and worship Satan. You say, 
I don't believe that. Well, then you don't understand the Word of God. Because our Father has told us that the Antichrist is going to be sitting in the temple of God claiming that he's God before the true Christ returns. But they don't teach that. They teach you to jump on his bandwagon and believe the first entity who shows up as the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him off in the air. Well, you're going to be deceived. You're deceived now. You don't know the truth. The truth is here. The truth will set you free. But you don't want that truth. You want to believe well, maybe your daddy believed and your daddy's daddy and your grandpa's pa and, and, and it goes back generations. Well, you mean to tell me they all got it wrong? They got it wrong if they believed that any moment doctrine? Absolutely. But it's up to you. It's up to you. How, how, how deep do you want to be with the Lord? Do you want His wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Well, you've got to dig deep in the Word and read it for yourself. If you need a teacher, ask the Lord to send you a teacher. He will send you a teacher. I guarantee it. But you got to test that teacher. Make sure that they're using the true Word of God. And that's another thing. you got preachers today that are reading from the same book we're reading from and get a completely different answer. Completely different answer. That's why they teach flyaway doctrine. If you take them to 1 Thessalonians, you know, meet the Lord in the air. You try to teach them what that means in the Greek, where they got those words from, air, breath of life, and all that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You're deceived, is what they tell you. Yeah. you you've, been, you've been given false doctrine, is what they'll tell you. Yeah. When the fact is, they're so steeped in traditions of men which make void the word of God, they can't no, come here from Sikkim, as Murray would say. You know, but verse 15 says, speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. See, if, if, you, if you give that truth out, one thing I know, what happens with people that reject Let's say the flyaway doctrine, since we're talking about it. They reject your understanding that there is no flyaway doctrine. And you plant that seed of truth. Cause you're, you're moved to do it. Now, I don't suggest you go up against anybody or any church unless you're moved to do it. Right. But if you're moved to do it, you do it. But they still don't accept it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Just let it, let it go. You planted the seed. Right. It is up to our Lord to water that seed. Right. And I, I've, I've realized something that just because you give them the truth, and that truth is so blatantly simple to understand, they don't say it, don't blame yourself. No. Some people do. Okay. They say, well, yeah, Lord, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not following you evidently correctly because I'm not getting through to them. You weren't meant to get through to them. What you were meant was to plant a seed. Right. You do the planting. He'll you make it grow. Don't worry about it. <coughs> you do or it won't plant. grow and don't worry about That's it. That's it. Well, it may not be a seed that doesn't grow at all until the millennium right. as well. You don't know. That's yep. his timing, mm -hmm. his deal. Well, that's where I was going with this is that even though they reject the truth about about uh, the Lord's coming, mm -hmm. return, and when it is, yeah. does not mean that when the time comes, it won't come to their mind. Right. When the Lord does return. Right. There won't be no question. They may it. say, you know what? Because it's in there. Yeah. Believe it or not, even if they don't remember, it's in there. Right. Or the Lord wouldn't have had you say what he okay. said. Right. So it's in there, and, and prayerfully, you know, um, a lot of people will turn around in those last days, you know. Um, it doesn't matter. Even if they don't, they got the millennium. They'll be there, and you're like, well, I guess you were right. I'll listen now. <laughs> no big deal. It could be. It. it could very well be. Verse 16. Don't worry about it. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted... That's held 
by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying or building up of itself in love. What does that mean? Okay, every joint. Let's look. At, let's 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 take our let's take our bodies as trees. And every joint, like we got roots, we got limbs, right? That's where a lot of our um, what's what's the word analogy now comes from. And everything is for a reason, and it helps other parts of the body to succeed. Well, where Paul's going with this is that's how it's supposed to be with Christians. Yeah. You know, just because we're all not on the <coughs> same level doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't matter if you if if all you have, and I don't mean to take that lightly, but is you've been evangelized and that's as far as you've ever gotten. That doesn't mean that you're not worthy. It doesn't mean that you're not worth something. Because we're all in this together. Yeah. And that's what our Father wants us to know and understand. Did you have a question? I have a comment. And that's where that pride comes in, too, that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier of not wanting, well, I don't want to associate with them because they're not, they don't have the knowledge. They're not accepting this level of knowledge over here. That's where that pride comes in, too, of mm -hmm. being humble. <laughs> yes, but also sometimes, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak one thing from recent experience, you're led by our Father to help a particular situation. You go there and you you try to accomplish that as best as best as you can, but it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, in that situation, after a period of time, and it really depends on our Father and how long He wants you to persevere. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're listening, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes he'll remove you from mm -hmm. that situation, saying, well, the seed was planted, it was there, thank you for your service, <laughs> I got something else for you to do, <laughs> you know, and sometimes that's hard to do, mm -hmm. especially if you get involved yep. in, in, um, a family. Well, it's supposed to be a family, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you treat them like brothers and sisters and that sort of thing. Um, but sometimes the Lord has pulled a person out of that situation and had them go uh, another direction or in helping someone else. Right. So but it's not always a negative thing yeah. to, to, to leave. You yeah. Know. <laughs> So the whole joint, the whole body supplies, every joint supplies the body. Every person in the church should supply for the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in, in the vanity of their mind. In other words, I don't want you to walk. You you can see people how they behave. Just it takes you five minutes talking with somebody to know where they're coming from. Basically, a lot of times, especially in your line of work, you know. Um, but the Lord says, look, when you when you see a negative element out there, peoples, organizations, whatever. Yes, I may send you in the middle of that organization to do my will. But when I pull you out and they're still behaving like a bunch of heathen, don't walk like they walk. Don't, you know, yeah, you could, you could get in a group by being a bad person if they're all bad people. They'll accept you. But get in that bad group and try to be a good person. See how well they'll accept you. So, our Father is saying, look, I'm, I'm going to send you where I need you to be. 
but um, don't walk like other Gentiles walk in their vanity of their mind. 18. Having the understanding darkened. This is critical to understand. <laughs> Having the understanding darkened. What does that mean? They had understanding, but it was darkened. Well, what does that mean? It's taken from them. They, it's like removing the candlestick from the church. Removing the knowledge and wisdom. I told you about this several weeks ago, I think it was, where I opened up the Word of God. I started reading and studying. I couldn't understand a word that I was saying. And it scared me to death. And it was God showing me something. Not that I was a bad boy, but he was showing me, hey, this can happen, and this is what it feels like. Because yeah. it scared me to death. Like, Lord, is this how it's going to be from now on? I mean, it, all this went, it, was, it, it didn't last long, but it was long enough to get me my attention to, to when I'm talking to, to people about losing their understanding, that, man, that, that's some big stuff. Mm -hmm. And God's not doing it to punish them. He's doing it to get their attention. Look, you want to walk in the world and behave the way the world walks? This is what's going to happen. You're not going to have knowledge and wisdom and understanding. You're just not going to have it. And I'm going to pull that from you. Why? Because my word, he says, is holy. And at that point, you don't deserve it. You say, well, how would, why would God say you? Because you could care less about him and his word. He's not going to force himself on you. But oh, how he wants to give you everything that he's ever created that's good. He wants you to possess all of that. But he's not going to be mocked. Mm -mm. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, the blindness of their mind. They just, they just shut it off. I don't want it anymore. I want nothing to do with it. He may not say those words, but their actions show God that. That they don't want to be a part of him anymore. I mean, I can't understand that, but I do understand that it happens. And it's terrible. But that doesn't mean you're a lost soul. You're a lost soul at that moment, but that doesn't mean you need to stay there. Yeah. Say, Father, forgive me. How stupid. Literally. But there again comes pride into it because they'll say, well, I'm right in feeling well, this Then you're way. not going to be exactly. saying that prayer, are you? No. The point I'm trying to make here, no matter how far you turn from God, you could take a thousand steps backwards. It only takes one step forward. Yep. See, he, he loves you that much. 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Notice it says being past feeling. In other words, it's like their emotions are cut off. They don't care anymore. No. Over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. You're in that position. You've never really learned about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe what this is really telling us is that once you truly learn, you truly have that faith, and you walk in that purity of, of God's religion, I'll call it, God's way, you're not going to go back. You might stumble. Yeah. You might stumble. But you know what? You're not going to forsake him. And I know God's saints aren't. Yep. He's set aside. He purposely picked them. Set them aside from all others of creation. 
see, that's, that's the beauty of Christianity, the way it's supposed to work, is why is he writing this to the people of Ephesus? It's to encourage them, but it's also to, uh, what's the word? Edify. Edify them. In other words, to correct anything them up. that might not be going the way that it should be going according to God's word. Because some of them were not following as they should. And some had infil infiltrated the, the group. Infiltrated, yeah. Um, and caused difficulties. Mm -hmm. And Paul and our Lord wants us to know and understand, look, if you're not on the same page, don't browbeat them. Because it's not going to do you or them any good. Mm -hmm. That's why we associate with like minds. You know, that's exactly why we do that. Because we know what we know and why we know it. And we're learning more as we grow, of course. But this, this lecture, this church, isn't... In, an evangelical church. Yes, I've asked people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ before on air and, and, and off the air. But we're a teaching church. That's the gift we've been given. Right. But I can assure you, any one of us, if we were to negate God, saying, well, I'm just not going to do it anymore, I'm too tired, or whatever the reason, that will be your choice. But don't expect there to be a blessing tomorrow. With understanding and knowledge. Because yep. that's the first thing he pulls. Mm -hmm. He says, you don't want a part of me? You don't have to have a part of me. But the Lord help you if, if the Lord's not helping you. you know. I want to do 21-22. I'm running out of time. What time did I start? I didn't even look. About quarter two, maybe. Uh -huh. I think, 22. Yeah, it was about an hour ago. Thank you. That's what I thought. Twenty-one, twenty-two, and one in there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> she just she wants to she wants to go on for like well, yeah. four hour four hour lecture. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's no place, place to be. <laughs> places in this world that teach all oh, day. day long, and people walk for miles and miles and miles to get there. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. this gas so hot? <laughs> 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 this may be today, yeah. <laughs> I come to that. Verse 21. I'll leave it to Ross. Verse 21. <laughs> if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation. That means the former life, right. the former lifestyle. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Let me do another one. 23. And be renewed. That means made new in the spirit of your mind. I need to finish the thought. 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So... If you've heard of the Lord, and if you've been taught by the Lord, and you believe in the truth of Lord Jesus, you know that you've got to put away your old personal self of a heathen. I mean, if you're not doing God's thing, God's way, then you're not going to succeed, are you? But you need to change. Something's got to change if you're walking in the old, old ways, meaning your old flesh sinful way. I don't know about you, but i got to repent every day. I wake up in the morning repenting. I go to bed at night repenting. I really do. And, and, and a lot of times it's just really powder. I call it powder sin now. Mm -hmm. You know, just not big stuff. But sin, sin. Thing that I've been battling lately is all these... <laughs> Crazy thoughts that come flying at me of the stupidest things. That's, I know it's not coming from me. And I know it ain't coming from God. 
So I got to repent of those negative thoughts that I dismiss them, you know. And the more I do that, the less often they come around. Well, that's the thing. If you didn't repent, they'd probably come more often. And of course you might, they would. You might fall away. I would fall away. But when, when it says, talks, talks about putting away the old man, that means the old way of life, the old sinful behavior. If, you're, if you were a liar, you stopped lying. If you were a thief, you stopped thieving. Uh, whatever the case may be. If you're an adulterer, you stop being an adulterer. You know, and you ask for forgiveness, and you do your very best staying in the Word of God and learning what He has for you to learn. And that's how to get along with everybody. The Lord I mean, w once you really learn this, actually you can get along with anybody yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. There's okay. certain people that the more more loving and kind you are, the more hateful yeah. they are. Because they don't want no part of it. Some of them might be Kenites. You know, sons of the devil. What I was going to say, as great as putting on the new man is that that pride thing enters in sometimes again. And the Lord has his way of bringing us back down to earth to show us that it doesn't take much for that old man to pop back up again. No, no it doesn't. And pride, pride is the biggest fall. Mm -hmm. And it can go on both sides. Really. What verse was that? Uh, 24? 24. Yeah. I keep forgetting to mark my end spots. Um, well, that's not right. The, um, the time for us to understand this is now. There's too many people right now that are just doing their own thing their own way. You know, and, um, and it's not the ways of the Lord. But it is not you to tell them that unless you're moved to. If God moves you to say something to somebody, by all means, you always speak. Have the Holy Spirit speak through you. But make sure it's of the Lord and not yourself. Because we all have these attitudes. You know, we all got these ideas of what people should do and what people shouldn't do. Well, what they should do is love the Lord and be one accord. <coughs> but I tell you what, with some people, I wouldn't want to be one of their accords. Mm -hmm. You know, because how they're just so hateful towards one another. Well, somebody you know. made, a, made a comment that, that it was last night, I guess, that it's it's kind of just shocking. And I mean, we know this, but it's kind of seeing people that profess to be Christians, how they're not walking in those oh, ways, gosh. especially in these times. Proofs in the pudding. Mm -hmm. You shall know them by their fruit. Isn't that what that means? Yes. You look at them, you, you, you hear what they say, yes. you see what they do, you know, their behavior. And uh, it's not where, where you can be Christian over here and not over here. No, you're Christian 24-7. Yes. If, you, if you get it, yeah. if you understand it. Just because you met Christ it doesn't mean you know it. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the evangelist. Oh, okay, well, let me introduce you to him. Okay, fine. But if you haven't taken the time to get to know him, then you're not going to do any of it. And how do you get to know him, Ross? Well, you got to be around him for a while. Cheers. Talk to him right. a little bit. Listen. Listen. Eat with him. <laughs> Stop yeah. with him. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's how you In other words, him. realize that he's there 24-7. You know how I used to define how I knew somebody? Have I had dinner at the mama's house? <laughs> if, no, I, sir, if, I, if I if I said that's a guy I really know, I chances are I've seen, he's, I've been to dinner at his mama's house with him. Now, that just that doesn't mean I know every. How many people have I done that? Handful. Yeah, yeah. But those I know. Yeah. If I know him well enough that your mama invite me to dinner, I know you. Yeah. Yeah. Vice right versa. Well, anywho. When here today and pick this back up a uh, week from week from today. Um, a week from today? Two weeks from today. Or two weeks. Two, week, two weeks. I'm sorry. Two uh, weeks from you're today. Just uh, And for those of you, I, I'm sorry I didn't didn't let you know 
previously, but um, we had switched our recording day from the Sabbath day Saturday to Sunday. And the reason I did that is, quite frankly, for me. Um, because a week ago Saturday, I was, after lecture, I was driving to work and fell asleep behind the wheel. And luckily God took care of me and all that, and no damage, no harm. But it really uh, scared me into a situation of realizing I just can't produce like I used to in the lengths that I did before. And you're off on Sundays. And I'm off on Sundays, so we've moved this now to Sundays, and hopefully by uh, 1 30, 2 o'clock, we'll, each, each week we'll, Lord willing, have it, uh, <coughs> especially every other Sunday, have it on the airwaves. So, any questions, comments, before we ever close in prayer? Well, I will say this, just be prepared I know you are, but I'm going to say it anyways for all those on YouTube. Be prepared for what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Don't go blaming this agency or that agency or this. Blame the people who have turned from God. But I wouldn't say blame them. I would say pray for them that they return to Christ. I just recently wrote a song. Uh, it's an old bluesy, slow blues kind of song, but it's basically crying out to the Lord and, and going back to Him again. I'll, I'll play it for you all sometime. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank You for Your anointing. We thank You for Your care. We thank You for Your long-suffering as You have taught us over and over again, Father. But we thank you for teaching us to, to be of one accord, one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But to honor your children's souls. We can hate the sin, but we need to love the sinner. And I pray that we will continue to work for you, Father, and no one else. And that you will gift us with the understanding of what to say, when to say, and how to say it. Then we always will be on the right track. I pray for everyone here today and their families, <coughs> and all those on YouTube and their families, that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, with all our souls. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory.